What's the scariest or strangest thing you've seen in a national park or national forest part five? Get comfy and enjoy the show if you're into it. Smash that subscribe button and spread the word about Thread Tonic. Count one. A rock the size of two trucks fell onto the place where my family stood 60 seconds ago. It killed eight people and 20 were wounded. I was an eyewitness to a natural disaster. A count two. I didn't see it. I heard it. I'm kind of a night owl, and I was up at night outside in a forestry area in the sequoias, doing imagined gymnastics in my head, when out of nowhere I hear this lady laughing hysterically. I have my flashlight out, and there is nobody there, not a single person in all directions with my high-powered flashlight. I went back inside, petrified. Scariest experience of my life. Me a believer in all sorts of stuff. Account three. Scariest sudden cliff at the end of what I thought was a normal path. I was small and didn't notice I was off trail. Almost fell. Strangest. Guy coming down trail completely naked except for sneakers and a bike helmet he was casually holding as he walked. Not. Covering anything with the helmet, by the way. Just walking past two tweens. Me and sibling, our dog, and our dad. We all pretended to find the moss on the side of the trail much more interesting than it was a moment ago until he left. I still have no idea what that guy's deal was. My only guess was a streaker, but we were on a trail heading up to a mountain lake. Account 4. A former friend who, while we were tripping on LSD, started confessing to the girl he accidentally murdered. Then, realizing he said too much, tried playing it off as a joke before he started with the casual threats, if we said anything. Account 5. I was camped at Guadalupe National Park. I woke up in the middle of the night to a rustling noise, rolled over to find myself nose to nose with a skunk inside my tent. I managed to get out without getting sprayed, but it was the longest two minutes of my life. Account six, not really scary, but definitely a good story. In Algonquin Park in Canada, my family and I were driving around going somewhere, I forget where, and there was a young black bear cub on a rock close to the road. We named him Terry. Another time was when a random baby fox followed our car, so that's a thing. Oh. Account seven. When camping with a friend and a group of their friends in a backwater part of West Virginia, the campground we were going to camp at was full poor planning on our part. The one guy drove down from DC for this, so we decided to look around for a place. We find this area that looks like it was a parking lot at one point long ago. It was nice and secluded, plenty of wooded space to set up tents. My husband and I decided to go to bed around midnight. We are awoken sometime around one in the morning. Some drunken guys pulled into our random secluded area and want to join us. The group declines, telling the guys it is rather late and they happened to catch them right as they were getting ready to go to bed. Guys get pushy about joining the group. The group keeps declining. It's been a long day. It is late. We have a long trip ahead of us tomorrow. Suddenly the guy's tone changes. They want to know how the group found this spot. How long the group has been here? Has the group been hiking at all? And how far into the woods we have been? The group answered. And suddenly the guys declared it was late and they really should be heading out, but wanted to know if the group wanted to buy any party favors before they left us for the night. Now maybe I've just seen too many horror movies, but I'm still convinced that those dudes were making drugs in those woods, and if the group's answers were anything other than what they were, there would have been seven bodies in those woods before sunrise. Maybe I'm just being paranoid and they were just some drunk locals looking to have some more fun before they went home, but I doubt it. Account 8. Spent a week hiking and camping with some college friends in Glacier National Park last year. Went out off the campsite for dinner and drinks at dusk one night as two massive four-legged animals crossed the road about 100 yards up. Really the biggest creatures I've ever seen. They had long cat-like tails, so did not look like bears, elk, moose, or anything, but almost too large to be mountain lions. To this day, my friends and I have no idea what we witnessed. Account 9. Not a national park, but just hiking in Hawaii. My friend and I went off the trails and decided to hike through a creek for six miles barefoot. Anyway, we saw a bird that looked insanely prehistoric, had a huge wingspan of 15 FT. We weren't quick enough to take our phones out in video or take pictures. We still joke and say that we saw a pterodactyl. 
Account 10. Not even six months ago, my husband, my 10-year-old stepson, he just turned 11, myself and our dog went on a family road trip from Portland, Oregon, the area we live, to Mount St. Helens on the outskirts of Cougar, Washington. We drove around and veered off at random down a road that looked like it might have potential hiking areas. We ended up parked at the beginning of a blocked off road where only foot traffic could continue. Starting at the base of the mountain, we passed a few people walking back towards us in the opposite direction. As we continued walking further, they shouted to us that further ahead was patches of unmelted snow and ice. Ignoring their warning, we pressed on. Without a solid plan as a family, we checked our phone map and realized we were on a trailhead leading up to Climber's Bivouac. So we decided that would be our turnaround point. Despite it being a three-mile hike, we had a very enjoyable time. As we climbed higher toward Climber's Bivouac, the ice and snow became deeper, mainly in shaded areas for the first two-thirds of the hike. However, the last third, and especially after reaching our turnaround spot, the snow and ice reached over five feet deep. We had to carefully navigate through soft spots that occasionally trapped our legs, making our progress tedious. On our way back down, I noticed our dog suddenly staying closer and more alert, which was unusual as he had been running ahead and playing freely on the way up. Knowing there are mountain lions and other predators in the area, I became concerned. About 20, 25 feet behind us in the brush and trees, we heard something pounding the ground and emitting an ape-like noise, similar to the territorial warning sounds gorillas make. My son and I froze, looking to my husband and our dog for reassurance. With a shaking voice, I asked my husband, Did you hear that? He reassured me. Oh, that was Spike. He started gagging and gasping after. Despite my certainty about what I heard and from where, and despite having seen Spike get sick before without making such a noise, I chose to believe him. We continued cautiously, feeling briefly reassured until we heard it again, closer this time only six to ten feet to my right, deeper into the wilderness brush. At that moment I was focused on our dog's movements and realized my husband had lied to keep us calm. This was not even halfway back down, we still had over two and a half miles to go. The rest of the descent was tense, with occasional snapping branches, and based on our dog's behavior, whatever it was seemed to follow us most of the way down, stopping about a quarter mile from our car. I will never forget that day. Especially after that event, I never venture into the wilderness without being prepared. Account 11. My friend was camping alone near the Appalachian Trail for a few days. One night, as he walked, he felt the sensation of being watched. Looking around, he confirmed his suspicion. The path he was on was a gravel road, wide enough for a car, mostly flat with a steep incline on one side. About 15 feet back and a few feet up to his right, he saw a pair of large cat eyes. Spotting a large tree limb on the ground, he wedged his foot under it without turning his back to the cat, kicked it into the air, catching it in his hand. He angrily waved it at the cat, shouting for it to leave. Fortunately, it immediately retreated. Relieved, my friend decided to sleep in his car that night instead of his tent. He cut his trip short, driving home the next morning. It had been too dark to identify the type of cat, so he never knew exactly what had been stalking him. Account 12. The strangest thing is when someone has an emergency on the trail and has to use their underwear for cleanup but doesn't bother to bury it. I always wonder about these people. Were they alone or with a friend? How uncomfortable was their hike out while going commando? Did this ruin hiking for them? Account 13. It was night when I peeked out of my tent after hearing something outside. I aimed a flashlight and saw about ten eyeballs staring at me. It scared the heck out of me, so I zipped up my tent and held on to a hatchet for dear life. I didn't sleep at all. When daylight came, I cautiously looked around. I glanced up at a tree and saw a mother opossum with a few babies on her back. The flashlight had made their eyes glow brightly, and for a moment, I thought it was an alien. I'm glad I didn't harm them. Opossums are really cool. Account 14. Northern Utah, saw a moose, tried to get a good picture by following it into the woods, quickly changed my mind after seeing his size. Had a 90 diamondback rattlesnake cross a dirt road in front of me, I was scared to stick my head out of truck to get a good look. FL. 
I guess I could have started with I got attacked by a 9-2 alligator while snorkeling in a spring run here in FL with my seven-year-old son, tried to bite my fucking head off, 50 stitches and staples, broken eye socket, but no worse for wear and tear. Career and modeling ruined. Just had to keep my day job. Account 15. It wasn't in a national park, but one time I saw a gigantic goose-looking thing, and there were geese there too, and it was about 6x bigger. While we do have swans in Oregon, this pond was in the middle of Portland. Account 16. I was in an actual tsunami while swimming at a national seashore in Hawaii. I did not know it was a tsunami until about two days later, when they announced it on the news. It seems like the water rose one to two feet while I was in it. I was half swimming, half wading, when I noticed that my feet could not reach the bottom. So I swam a few strokes towards shore, and then I was in very shallow water. I did not feel the water suck out or push back in, but it was strangely turbulent. As a rule of thumb, whenever something is weird in the ocean, get away from it. So that's what I did, and when I got out of the water, I noticed that the line of wet sand had moved inland about 20 or 30 IFT. I shrugged it off as just a freak wave and left the beach. The crazy thing is, a couple hours earlier, I was in a restaurant having breakfast, and the news on the radio mentioned that there was a tsunami watch in effect because of an earthquake in the South Pacific. This was not a warning bulletin, but just a mention of it in the news. No tsunami siren went off. I definitely would have heard it. I was only a couple hundred yards away from one. Count 17. Not national, sorry, but a small state park right in the middle of my city. I was hiking the east side of the hill and came across a small clearing that had piles of small bones all over the place. A little unnerving. Then a little further south, I came across a deer carcass. Just the head and skin. No bones or muscles. Right next to that were very canine feet sticking out from under a big pile of sticks. Believe it or not, I went back there a couple times. Deer was gone. I think I may have been lucky to make it out of there. Account 18 being stalked while hiking in Arches NP. So Arches was bonkers busy this summer and my partner and I kept missing our chance to get in. We decide to make one last ditch effort before leaving the area and see if we can go at night, sleep on the DL in our truck and hike at sunrise. And then we realize there's a full moon that night. So we drive up to Devil's Garden, take a nap, and then wake up around midnight with this amazingly bright and huge full moon and set out on our hike. It was just incredible. Seeing the arches at night like that was something truly too magical to put into words. We did most of the hike silently because it was just so magical and it felt right not to fuck it up with conversation. Near the farthest part of the trail, heading towards Landscape Arch, there's a spot where the trail passes through a little narrow valley thing. The trail is high and there's some bushes down below the trail on both sides. And then there's high cliffs with swifts, birds, singing loudly on either side of that. When we're passing through, I hear this tiny but distinctly weird noise in the bush, almost like the sound of quickly rubbing your hands together a few times. Everything seemed pretty normal, though, and I figure we just startled a bird or a deer or something. We hike to Landscape Arch, sit for a while, and turn around to hike back. When we get to exactly the same spot in the trail, I hear the same noise again, only this time a lot closer to us, and the bird suddenly went completely silent. My brain, the hair on the back of my neck, and everything within me just started screaming, Mountain Lion. I didn't want to panic my partner, so I just said, I think there's something here. We need to keep walking, and I don't think we should stop, and I started clapping my hands together with each step. We hiked the whole way back to the car, feeling it following us, fighting the urge to break out in a run and being way too terrified to stop or turn around look. Getting close to the parking lot, the trail opened up one last time and we both felt it stop following us. The creepy sensation just melted away. When we're back in the parking lot, he looks at me and says, so we just spent the last 20 minutes being followed by a mountain lion, right? And I'm like, yep! Told a ranger what happened the next day, she was like, yep! Needless to say, though it was magical for a while, I don't recommend silent night hikes. And don't fucking hike alone in the evening or overnight. We're both tall, big, healthy-looking people, and we're walking close together. Otherwise, I feel very certain one of us would have been big meow mix.